Earthquakes radiate waves which cause oscillations of the ground below. Seismometers can measure this ground motion. It can be used to obtain information about the earthquake rupture. However, during earthquakes, the surrounding rock is also deformed irreversibly and permanently. In the case of shallow quakes, these changes in the Earth's surface can be observed. The ground below the surface gets displaced in opposite directions and may even break, as can be seen here in a historical picture taken in San Francisco, a result of the serious earthquake on April 18, 1906. Today, such deformations can also be measured from afar with the help of satellites and geodetic methods. Hello and welcome. How can satellite measurements contribute to the understanding of earthquakes and their focal mechanisms? And what can they measure? I will be answering these questions together with the seismologist Henrietta Sutaus in this video. You will become familiar with the satellite assisted INSA method and how it can be used to investigate earthquakes. In particular, you will learn how geodetic measurements complement seismological ones and which properties of the earthquake rupture can be analyzed using them. Henrietta Suthaus works at the University of Kiel, from where she is now connected to me via webcam. Hello Henriette. Hi there. On the photo of 1906, the change of the Earth's surface, the deformation, is impossible to miss. How can we observe and measure such effects today if we don't happen to have someone passing by? First of all, I have to say that not all earthquakes cause such strong effects. It is only the major quakes with a magnitude of around 6 and above, and only shallow quakes. Furthermore, during such quakes, the Earth's surface does not always rupture either, but often we can observe that the surface around the event has been deformed. Nowadays, this is more and more done from a satellite. What does this mean exactly? What does the satellite measure? We use radar waves to scan the Earth's surface. The method is called Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, or INSA for short. The radar waves are microwaves in the centimeter range. And in particular for Earth observation, we use the X, Z and L bands. This corresponds to wavelengths between 3 and 23 centimeters. These wavelengths allow us to look through clouds. Hence, images can be taken in any weather. To illustrate this, you have a video from the European Space Agency ESA for us. That is right. In the video, we can learn roughly how such radar imaging works. We see a satellite at an altitude of around 800 kilometers. And the first thing we recognize are large solar panels. We require a lot of energy to radiate the radar waves. And then a large antenna appears below. It is approximately 12 meters long, just to give you an idea of the scale. And here we can now understand how the imaging works. We can still see the Alps on the right side. And then a particularly bright spot appears here, which is Hamburg. And now the outline of Denmark there. The grey tones show the intensity of the reflected radiation. Cities and towns appear bright and smooth ocean surfaces are mostly dark. And how many kilometers can a satellite scan per day in this manner? The satellite makes 14 orbits per day and is able to scan the entire Earth within 12 days, upon which it will once again pass by the exact same position. Because we have two satellites in space, as you can see here, we achieve recurrence intervals of six days at all points on the Earth. How can this radar be used to investigate an earthquake? Specifically, we observe the travel time differences between two radar images one from before and one from after the quake. Such a radar image contains amplitude information, as we have just seen, but also phase information. We can now measure phase differences between two images, which then give us information on whether the ground has moved towards or away from the satellite. Because we record these images over areas and have this information on a lot of pixels, we can measure this in a highly accurate fashion over multiple kilometers, achieving precision within a sub-centimeter range. Hence, what takes place here is a comparison of radar measurements from before and after a quake. How important are the surface conditions in this case? Quite important. We want the phase difference to come entirely from the displacement, but plants and dense forests move, for example, in the wind. This changes the phase of the backscatter randomly, and that is something we do not want. 
The best is when we have highly stable surfaces where there is no agriculture, for example. This means dry areas or mountain regions. Urban areas are also particularly suitable because almost nothing changes on the surface and we have objects that cause strong backscatter. And it is only when the ground exhibits these properties that we have this high level of accuracy in our images. On this image, we can see the phase displacement from an earthquake in the year 2011 in Myanmar. This is indicated in color in the image. On the top left, we see a color scale and from the color gradient, we can see how much the ground has moved and whether it has moved towards or away from the satellite. For example, we can realize that the color gradient is mostly weak in the outer areas of the image. This means that there is little phase change and also little ground motion there. But when we look at the center of the image, we see that the colors change more rapidly and form something like contour lines. And these contour lines show me how strongly these areas have deformed in a manner very similar to topographical maps, which also have contour lines. And we also know that when topographical contour lines are close to each other, it indicates a steep rising or falling slope. And this is also the case here. When the contour lines are close to each other, I have a strong deformation gradient. What I can see also is that the rupture plane is around 20 kilometers long. These are already a large number of properties of an earthquake which we can already read off the image. Hence, these patterns describe the permanent deformation after an earthquake as they are visible on the surface. Different focal mechanisms such as reverse, normal and strike slip faults generate different ground movements and hence also different patterns. How can we now calculate them? With models, of course with elastic half-space models. You can imagine this, for example, with a dish sponge, a highly elastic model. A cut is now made in the sponge, that means an artificial rupture plane. And now imagine we were to put slip on the rupture plane within the sponge, for example by one centimeter. You can perhaps imagine what this would do to the surrounding surface. It would be deformed elastically. It is a little different from what we know from textbooks, which present models of blocks of rocks which rigidly slip past each other. I then get an elastic deformation with a highly characteristic pattern. These two diagrams show the results of such a computer simulation, namely the surface displacement for a right-hand lateral strike-slip earthquake. We can also recognize this via the beach ball in the bottom right corner. On the left illustration, we see the east-west component of this displacement and as we can see it is rather prominent. Above the fracture the surface moves towards the east and below it towards the west. However, we see on the right side that we have also a north-south displacement, even though we have a pure strike-slip earthquake. From the signs of this displacement at the surface it is rather straightforward for us to deduce the mechanism of the earthquake. How can INSA data complement seismic observations? As we have seen, INSA data is highly sensitive for the location of the earthquake, its position and also for the displacement on the Earth's surface and the displacement on the rupture plane. In this respect, they are much more precise than the seismic data. Furthermore, it also allows us to closely monitor the extent of the rupture of these shallow earthquakes. But we only have images taken at intervals of several days. That means we have no temporal information about the earthquake at all. This can only be supplied by seismology. This means that when data is required on the dimensions of the rupture plane and the subsequent displacement, satellite-aided radar measurements, for example INSA, can provide valuable contributions to the investigation of focal mechanisms. Henriette, INSA technology only became possible with data from new satellites from the past 25 years or so. It is a big field for new research. What do you do exactly in this area? There are only a few experts who are equally well-versed in seismological and INSA-based observations. I came to INSA Technologies as a seismologist and would now like to combine these datasets in a more consistent manner. Specifically, I am working on computer programs which aim to facilitate this for us. And this is particularly important now because the ESA has put in a great deal of effort and has two satellites in space which deliver data for free to anyone, thereby greatly facilitating education at universities which is important. Naturally, our hope is that the earthquake models we produce become more robust and that this allows us to better assess the hazards. 
This would allow us to better prepare for earthquakes and hopefully have fewer deaths to mourn in the future. That would of course be a worthwhile endeavor. Henriette, thank you for the exciting and clear introduction to this topic. I hope to see you soon. Certainly, it was my pleasure. Bye. Bye. In this video, you learned how radar measurements can provide insight to earthquake deformation at the surface. For this purpose, phase shifts between two flyovers are evaluated. You have seen that, specifically, the extent of the rupture, the mechanism and the fault slip during the quake can be investigated with geodetic methods, seismology and geodesy, another example of how different geoscience disciplines can be combined to provide a more and more accurate picture about the processes inside the Earth.